But of course, the position in three dimensions is not enough to make sure he gets to the meeting. The invitation must also carry a fourth piece of information, the time. Four pieces of information specifying a single event in four dimensions, three of space and one of time. So here is a single event in space and time, or as scientists call it, space-time. Treating time as a dimension means that scientists can not only consider time travel logically, they can also explain why it seems so utterly confusing to us. Suppose that there is a world that has only two dimensions, like this piece of paper, and that there are beings that can only live in this two-dimensional world. They can conceive of length and width, but they cannot conceive of the third dimension, height. What would they make of a three-dimensional object, like this paperclip, if I introduced it into their world? To them, it will appear as though the object came out of nowhere. They can't conceive of the fact that it came from a third dimension. And if I pull the object back out of their two-dimensional world into the third dimension, to them, it will have appeared to vanish. In just the same way as a creature from a flat world would see a three-dimensional object doing the impossible, we humans being three-dimensional would see a traveler in the fourth dimension do some very strange things too. Like the paperclip, a time traveler would simply vanish to reappear in another time. And that's not the only strange thing that happens. If I fold this piece of paper over and push this single paper clip through, the people in this world will see this one object in two places. Thanks. That's why time travel, which is travel in the fourth dimension, allows someone to be in two places at once. If a professor could travel back in time, he could be the one who gave himself the invitation to the meeting. It sounds strange to us, but that's because we're not used to seeing travel in higher dimensions. This sort of thing was the very reason why time travel was thought to be impossible. But as we know, it's not. And in fact, as early as the 1970s, people have been traveling in time just by getting on board a primitive chemical rocket. Not many people realize it, but the space age made it possible to cross the fourth dimension. There are already time travelers among us. This is cosmonaut Sergei Avdeyev. He holds the record for spaceflight, having spent a total of more than two years on board the Russian space station Mir, orbiting at 16,000 miles per hour. Spending so long going so fast means that Avdeyev is also the current world record holder for time travel. He has been propelled a fraction of a second into the future. Most people think that time passes at a steady rate, no matter where you are or what you're doing. So a minute in New York is the same length as a minute in London, or Paris, or Tokyo, or the moon for that matter. It's perfectly natural to think of time as being fixed, as if there could be a giant master clock for the whole universe, allowing us, or any other civilization, to agree on the one true time forever and ever. In fact, that's impossible. Time flows at different rates in different places. There are places in the universe where time slows down. And if you were to visit them, you would actually get old less quickly compared to the rest of us. This strange idea is the foundation on which Professor Mallet will build his time machine. Hi, Chandra. Hey, how are you doing? Fine. It's good it's to, glad see, to you. see you. Okay. Working with Chandra Roy Chuduri, an experimental physicist who specializes in laser technology, he hopes to be able to create a machine 
that will use the principle of flexible time to send particles into the past. Time is not the same for everyone. Each one of us travels with our own individual clock, and there are things that you can do to change the rate at which your clock is going compared to someone else's, and that allows time travel. Although it sounds impossible, don't be deceived. This seemingly crazy notion is part of the bedrock of modern-day science. In 1905, a 26-year-old by the name of Albert Einstein showed how space, time and also energy are linked. We know he got it right because his theory led directly to the atomic bomb. This is the very same theory that should allow real, practical time travel. And it's all to do with the speed of light. Now, let me tell you a bit about light. Light travels very, very fast, at about 670 million miles per hour. If a particle of light were to circle the Earth, it would do so nearly 10 times in just one second. Einstein's big idea was that the amazing speed of light holds the key to everything, from the untold power of the atom to the possibility of time travel. To follow in the footsteps of his genius, imagine the great scientist in a rocket ship floating in deep space. The ship has powerful headlamps, and if Albert switches them on, the light from the lamps races away from him at, of course, the speed of light. 670 million miles an hour. Now imagine that Albert has a twin brother, Bertrand, who also has a spaceship. If Bertrand flies away from Albert at very high speed, let's say half the speed of light, how fast would Bertrand see the light from Albert's headlamps if it overtakes him? You'd think he would see it pass by more slowly, because after all, he's flying along in the same direction. But you'd be wrong. The theory says he would see it pass at the full speed of light. Bertrand's own speed through space makes absolutely no difference. This prediction of Einstein that the speed of light is the same for everyone is one of the strangest in physics. But it's true. It's been shown by hundreds of experiments. The speed of light is going to be the same, no matter how fast you're moving towards it or away from it. Even if Bertrand turns around, he would still see the light pass him at the same speed. So what's going on? Welcome to the realm of time travel. Because if both brothers see the same speed, then something else must be changing. And that something is time. Something has to give, and the things that have to give are space and time. It turns out that if an object is moving fast enough through space, it can alter its passage through time. This is the famous theory of relativity, and it means there's no one true time. Time is flexible. The rate at which it passes depends on how fast you're going. The effect is not just theoretical. It has real, everyday implications. A satellite that orbits the Earth at 20,000 miles per hour experiences 0.02 of a second less per year than the rest of us down on Earth. The onboard computers have to be programmed to take this into account. Otherwise, the satellite's clocks would run constantly slow. If Bertrand's ship had some suitable equipment, we could see this mysterious effect for ourselves. This device is a light clock. Two mirrors that face each other with a particle of light or photon bouncing between them. Each bounce is one tick of the clock. And in the right hands, such a clock shows directly how time is changed by speed. 
These ticks would normally occur millions of times per second, but we have slowed it down 